dive with it. It looks like they're going to be walking around up a dark for a minute here. Obviously, Entropic are on the T side with Astralis on the CT side. Megas has already taken a bit of damage, it seems. So um, we'll see how that's going to be playing out for him. It's a pistol round, so not that much fun being uh, down on 16 health. There's a good flashbang. Lucky, or oh, he is in trouble. And he's never going to be able to make it out. You can tell he knew that was bad. Dupree trying to bring it back. Good headshot. Magus even low on health. He's going to be able to pick up the kill on one of them at least. But Dupree will drop Forrester. And that leaves it. I don't know. Lackey and Nickelback on their own trying to bring it back. They actually do incredible work bringing down Magus and Dupree. And we're back into a 2 on 2. Oh, and they're so slow, they're not able to get in to challenge this in a 2v1 while the bomb gets planted. That was the best chance for Astralis. Now they have to do it the hard way. Yes, they do. That is just a decoy. Thought for a second it was going to be something more. Glaive sneaking closer. Sip trying to join in. Lackey going to be picking up the one kill on Glaive, but Sip is here trying to clutch it in the major. Oh, he's out of bullets. Knife on the other side, but Nickelback, he's got it wrong. He's going to have to try and reload. Sip is back for revenge. And he's going to take him down, runs for the defuse, and he should have enough time for it as nope. well. Oh, no. Oh, no. I actually thought he could pick up a kit in there, but turns out not to be the case. So that is a devastating way to lose a pistol in the opening round. Wow. Man, and it looked so promising with Dupree and Maddie is finding kills to make up for the fact that Lucky got jumped in mid. Zipnix nearly pulls it off with two kills, but thanks to that new timer that we see there in the top left, we get to see just how much time it's going to take to uh, defuse as well as, uh, you know, before the bomb goes off. So you can match it up a little bit. And it was a split second, Anders. You, were, you weren't wrong. So it was so close. But Zipnix realized he didn't have enough time. He can't see that. But the pros know. They can tell if they've got time or not with they've a kid or not. got some hours in it. Yeah. yeah. They can probably guess. Ooh, double tag? Get out of here. No, not quite. Lucky and Dupree getting tagged in mid, though. Not going to help things. And you can see the investment. The, you saw it. You pointed that out, Anders, where you can drop down into suicide on the T side and uh, still be able to spot into mid. It just takes you a little bit longer, and you have to invest a bit more. Definitely. Uh I would say an evolving meta, and it also it limit it makes it when so that when you're looking on the CT side, there are just fewer angles to spot for. I mean, precisely one less huge angle up in T spawn. So that means maybe on the CT side, you're going to be a little bit more more likely to actually take the fight. Maybe you feel like you can do it because that had kind of gone away in the past. It's very hard to take that fight on the CT side. You just kind of ignore it. But maybe now people will try it a little bit more, hoping that they can uh, win that battle. Second round starting with. Um, Ilian, I'm assuming. Ilian, yeah. Ilian going down straight off the bat. Ooh. Lackey coming through. Glaive jumping for the shot here with the Deagle, but it's hard to do with the Deagle. You're not going to be guessing much through there. Dupree is down and out, and that's pretty much going to be it for the B-bomb site. So, I don't know. You could justify if you're Astralis not going for more damage here and just falling back with the weapons, because you're going to be using them in the next round anyway, so... So probably better to just back it on out. But Entropic doing a, a fine job so far. Yeah, without a doubt. Just moving on back, easy peasy. And um, I'm really, I mean, this is where I'm starting to wonder if Entropic... ...on it. pressure but then you draw where lucky is going to be playing on this map on this CT side they can make his first half a living hell I mean that's going to be part of the plan for sure from their point of view got what three AKs one Galil one scout and on the other side the pistols that they saved from the previous round the one scout they're unlucky it's early days still on Dust 2, so I don't want to get too carried away. It's a kill down the middle on Ilian, so that is... That's about as uh, unfortunate of a start to the third round as you could get. Still, they should have a good chance of winning it here. Dupree will spot Forrester down in lower dark. Quickly backing on out. Hmm. Sick. Oh, oh, Crad, you're not supposed to be missing a smoke like that. That's an unforced error. Maybe some jitters. I mean, it's not like Entropic are, uh, are long in the tooth either. It's not like they have too much experience at this level. One of the teams that is going to be looking to try and shake things up here and uh, represent the CIS region. Oh, not quite. So, screwing up grenades that you should know the lineup for 100%. Oh! Questionable. 
That otherwise could have been a really dangerous one-two punch there if Lucky gets some damage and then Dupree gets put into play afterwards. But Forrester, that was a very, very good spray that came through. Glaive goes down next, leaving Sip him up. Just Magus now going down. So um, he's on his own out here. Nickelback will take him. And we've got a third round of the ball for Entropic in spite of losing um, Ilian early in the spawn. Mm -hmm. They kind of, kind of make up for it. They don't get too rattled. Now is the big test for Astralis, though. If they can't win this round, <laughs> it's going to be really awkward, isn't it? He saw the leg there. All right. Well, the, question, the question is whether or not they're going to be regretting the decision to put Glaive in instead of Bubsky uh, for Astralis, considering the performance. Uh, well, people will certainly I have evolved. questions one day. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you go 0-2 on the first day here as Astralis, and this was after a change where you went 5-0 and in your group, looked terrific, did a little bit of damage in the playoffs, but that was fine. You were still ironing out the kinks. And then you decide to bench your strongest player, or at least the player that performed best in that tournament. Uh, you know, there are going to be some questions. There's definitely going to be some questions. No doubt the social medias will be will be lighting up, uh -huh. but I mean it, it's 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 too soon to tell, right? Still in that fourth round, Lucky's got his AWP. They've got all the M4A1s. Obviously, another patch change to to pretty much cement them as the go-to M4 nowadays. Oh yeah. Not many people holding on to the other one. Never changed, Andrews. Never changed. So you were on that team. Too, <laughs> Disgusting. Get out of here with the A4. <laughs> See, you only had an A4 because you had the Howl skin, so that's why I'm know. convinced that's the only reason why you used one. And I got rid of it, so maybe now I should just join mm -hmm. the M4A1 team. Yes. Maybe I should. Maybe it's time. Oh, nice HE. That's actually pretty good, yeah. A meaty one. Setting up those grenades, but they're going to go out middle instead, so this is just a faking a catwalk push from the Entropic side, trying to set it up for middle. Glaive, he couldn't see much at all there, but apparently enough to take down Lackey. Uh, very interesting. I otherwise really like that. That smoke that they put up on the T side on the catwalk can mean anything. It could be for an A push, it could be to drop down in the CT spawn, or in this case, it could be just to look for information in the middle, which they lost a player to. Lucky with a kill on Nickelback. It's not bad. Crad will be taken down to pre in return, and we're in a 2 on 4 with Crad and Ilian. Well, they're going to get completely found out here. So, uh, I would say a bit more of a slow round. I actually wish they would have committed to that mid push with the, with the fake. Uh, obviously, we could see that that maybe would have worked out. Although, I still am pretty impressed that Glaive could see anything through that. Yeah, that's like the barest margin, the smallest of gaps, and Glaive is able to take advantage of it. And that's just nightmare fuel for Entropic because you don't know if he's boosted up. You don't know how much he sees. Are you going to lose more guys pushing through? And I guess that's where they got cold feet, as you said, and decided to try and go up catwalk. But without, you saw it right there. Without any flashes, without any smokes, without any mollies, but more importantly, flashes to force the op off of that angle that Lucky was holding. Yeah. It's so hard to move out in the open towards that A bomb site. You need the flashes to force Lucky backwards, or at least try and get a smoke down, something to work with. But dry peeking it, you're going to die. And so in Tropic, that was a bit of a rough round. Maybe working out some of those jitters. All right, we're seeing some unforced errors here. So we'll see if they're going to be able to tighten up their game. Oh, well, this is good so far. He actually got so deep in. Lucky to take down Glaive as well. It's looking really good for Entropic. Sip, he will just randomly spray through the smoke and get a kill on Lackey. So at least they got that Astralis. Otherwise, this might have been a lost round almost already. It was about to be three on five. So... The fact that they're three on four instead is is a good look for them. But still, a minute and 25 seconds. When you get these kills this early on, there's so much you could do. Sip has to be real careful, and he's only just back around the corner. That flashbang was good. Setup was pretty good there for Entropic. They're going to know the orb is up here. In fact, they know where two out of three players for Astralis are. So the math is pretty easy right now if you're on the T side. This is going to be key. And Lucky doesn't miss the shot. Brilliant work, but we will get that smoke wall down. They realize now that they need to push up onto the bomb site itself. And that Molotov impeccably timed. It's drawing everything out here for Entropic. They need to move, but these nades are buying so much time for the defense. Forrester with a good kill on Sip. Nice nade. There we go. <laughs> the utility damage coming back in for the Astralis side. Still 40 seconds, though, on the clock, so. Don't want to get too ahead of ourselves here. If you're on the Entropic side, you need to take a deep breath and just use that timer to your advantage and make sure you don't suddenly start planting and get you know boosted on a jump done. Nice Molotov there. Is he going to be able to follow it up? Lucky, he's thinking about it, trying to bait out the shot, and the Molotov's not burning him. There's one kill. Megas with the return, but Forrester is there. That is a great trade in favor of Entropic, and they're going to be up 4-1 to one against Astralis. Ooh, and that's interesting. Forrester does not grab the AWP.
So a little bit of a mistake there. Not going. That's a, an expensive one. He has to tap his whole bank to drop an AWP over for Elyon when he could have grabbed one, saving it on long. Thought we were going to like, get a collateral there for a second it on like that it. shot. It looked so close to getting a two for one. That would have been so sick. But Entropic still get the round locked down. And here we go. First tactical timeout getting called by Astralis. They are a team that will not waste time. They'll throw the tactical timeouts as soon as they feel like things are starting to slip away. And so this is good. They're not wasting any time. They're going to try and address this quickly here, Astralis. And as far as their money is concerned, enough to force, but it's not going to be pretty. Or are they just going to... They're going to play conservatively. Okay, then. So it is going to be just a little bit of a half five. Megas going for a scout. A couple I mean, of Deagles getting picked up. This is where I think you really, the experience and just, you know, the, the years mm -hmm. combined on this team should should add up to a sort of, well, 4-1. Sure, it doesn't sound that good, especially if you take into account how they lost to Copenhagen Flames. But at the end of it, it should be a perfectly recoverable scoreline for a shot. They have to maintain that confidence in themselves to say, mm -hmm. of course we can win this. So, yeah, even if we give them 5-1, who cares? It's, it's what? It's the first sort of third of the first half. We're going to be fine. We're going to be all right, even if that happens. So I think they have to maintain that. If they start panic buying now and forcing up with with Famasas or anything, I would be, I'd be really worried for Astralis. But I think this is a good choice. Just try and play it off like it's not that big of a deal and and move off, move on. Indeed. Okay. Now we get the countdown. I was wondering there if we were having a little bit of a tech timeout as well on top of things. But uh, countdown has begun and it's looking like we're going to be able to get back in here. And you can already see some of the nades getting dropped around. Uh, horsing around, not enough money to full buy for these guys, so it is a little, a little awkward. You can see them trying to decide what they want to do with this. Got to be a little careful with some of those nades, because even in the timeout, they keep rolling. I mean, we saw a hilarious yes. uh, video. Oh, Ooh, he just does a drive-by. He didn't even stop. He shot him through the door. My God, Whoa. get those rolling nades. That headshot from the scout is way more of a concern. That was so sick. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Vitality. That was the meme on Vertigo. I know, dropped yeah. it And it's like the <laughs> watching the smoke roll off the side of the building. I mean, so obviously that's not going to happen on Dust 2, right? But it can still roll quite far away from spawn if you're unlucky. And maybe you don't want that. Like you said, coming back to it. Lucky here, close with the Deagle. Missed the timing just a bit. And he's on his own. There's no one there to return that kill. Glaive. Easy find. One click on Forrester. And that actually locks them into the map now. They have to go for this. They can't really backtrack across the map. So Astralis have a bit of a, at least an informational advantage in this play. They don't have the weapons quite. But Glaive has stolen that AK-47 and he's just running through T-spawn trying to get here. ASAP. Blackie with two great kills. That actually, that kills the flank for Glaive so much. He needed his teammates to be alive for that AK to have any say. He should stop running. There's no point in going for this. Save the AK and let him have this round. He wants to give Lackey the ace. Don't do it. He wants to give Lackey the ace? Lackey's got a chance. It. You might be right. Why is he doing this? I just I don't feel like this is even close to worth it. A <laughs> shot from Glaive? But yeah, he's going to walk into Crad with that AWP. So fair enough. He at least, he at least got the one kill. I, I know they can buy in this round, but I still think that AK, mm. you could have given that over to Dupree. He would have had a lot more money to work with in the future. I just, I think... There's almost no way. He didn't have a kit either, I think. So to win that one versus three, highly unlikely. Especially if you're going to count on Dupree to be that B-side anchor. Give him all the firepower he can get right now. He's only got two kills, though, Dupree. So, again, a lot of eyes on Dupree and Megas to be the heavy hitters here for the team in these matches. They need to carry the weight. And so Dupree, B-side, sometimes it really is hit or miss. Either it works or it doesn't. But um, now we're going to see another tactical timeout getting called here by Astralis going into this pivotal round. This is now time for them to start get, <laughs> to get things rolling here on the CT side. We've seen yeah. since the change that it was it shifted ever so slightly more to, towards the CT side in terms of advantage in the half. So if Astralis are trailing already five to one, they need to start getting in gear here, Anders. They need to start doing some damage. Yeah, I think now is about the time where, like I said just a couple of rounds ago, I don't think they should be panicked because it's still pretty early on. But if you lose this round and it's 6-1 to one and it's another buy round, ooh, nice shot. Ilian taking down Lucky. He just saw that coming. But again, you could tell how much more Astralis are, are willing to try and fight. They're also pushing Upper Dark into lower. They've actually cleared this entire side of the map. Ilian, though, he knows that smoke is a dead giveaway, that they've lost this part of the map. And the question is... In a four on five, do you just want to go long? Actually, a lot of teams do that because either you just go long like you started, you just commit to this play, yeah. or you have to backtrack and check every part of the map as you go back. And that's usually not a good idea either. So 
I actually, I don't really like this position for the T side, although a lot of teams find themselves in it. We just watch a lot of Dust 2. You see this happening pretty often, actually. Oh. It's, it's, this is where I wonder if they got cold feet or not in Tropic, if they tried to slow it down, not realizing that they were, that push was happening. But uh, now Glaive is going to get the freebie on Elyon, and it's just going to shape up so nicely here for the defense. Astralis is going to be able to drop those nades on the palm signs. Lackey looking to open it up. He's going to get one and a second. Great handling of that AK. Just absolutely aware that one of them was flashed. He went for the second player up on the catwalk first. That works out so well. Now it's a 2-1-3. Magus is setting up. Molotov, does it actually land in the corner? You can throw it there, but it's not always that easy. And it's not going to matter. <laughs> he forced him out, sure, but Forrester was there to help out his mate, and he's going to get a double kill of his own. Six to one. Astralis, they had the open the right place. They had all the information. They knew what was coming to the A bomb site, and they still could not defend it against Entropic. Yeah, the fact that Dupree is even able to get a kill over. They rotated the extra guys over once they cleared out lower and upper halls. Astralis, they just rotated those extra bodies over towards A. They knew where Entropic were. That's why I was criticizing Entropic, saying that they may be going too slow in this situation and that they should get smashed by Astralis. And yet, comes down to it, Astralis cannot connect the shots. Glaive was cowering on the bomb site, not really looking to take a fight. And Lackey just ripped his head off. And I think he was flashed for the first like two or three seconds even of that it was really some good grenades coming in from entropic i mean that yeah that's worth pointing out too this is this could just be one of those picks here for entropic where again astralis may not be as comfortable on it given the fact that glaive has been sitting out waiting on um, well you know congratulations his first child of course but like not able to put as much work in perhaps whereas entropic you know full five-man roster they could just be ready on dust you dialed in knowing exactly what they want to do and I mean, it, you're right, and it makes a huge difference whether or not you're playing best of ones or best of threes, right? Because it's entirely possible that pushed into a best of three scenario, Entropic don't have the map depth mm. to try and actually fight on, on three maps like this, but best of ones, it is just a different feel. Glaive has got a single kill in this round so far, and maybe that's a start. Nice grenade on Lackey. Oh, and Forrester almost getting himself killed. This could make it a one versus two, in fact, but reloading around the corner, you don't want to be doing that. Orbis on the other side. And that bomb is planted as well. So Dupree's out looking, trying to see if he could find anything. Glaive is hanging around as well, up on the catwalk. But Forrester, he's just, they're just going to leave him be. Glaive, back around the corner. He can't really go for a defuse here for 10 seconds against the AWP down here. It's such a powerful position. And Ilian going to be doing a fine job. Forrester showed up as well. That could have been a very, very sketchy round for Entropic, but they handled it just fine once they realized what was going on. And they're going to be getting a seventh round to the one of Astralis. It's just sometimes you're going to get that lucky break, Anders. Sometimes you're going to survive with three health, <laughs> and that's just going to save the round. Yeah. You know, if he dies there, that's it. You're going to get crunched if you're out and You're going to get scissored on. The, you're not really going to be able to stay alive at long because you can get pinched from the bomb site and from Long House. But the fact that Forrester stays alive there, three health is what makes all of the difference. Him staying alive just throws everything out of whack for Astralis in that retake. Lackey has been playing an absolutely incredible game so far. He's 13 and 5. He's had, I think, a double kill at least every time they show up to the A bomb site. That is, I mean, even that alone is probably a good reason to keep going A if you really want to. You can justify it because you've got this one guy that's just a battering ram knocking down Astralis every single time. So that is impressive. At this level, again, the pressure is. It looks like Entropic are cruising through the first part of this half here. Trust me, this is some high-tension gaming coming out because if they if they slip up, they could let Astralis back in the game. They know what's on the line here. Looks like they're having a bit of a free ride right now, but I don't think it feels that way at all if you're on the T side. Magus in the corner. No one's checked it. It's not going to be a multi-spray down, but there is a team kill in the middle of that. Lackey taking down Forrester and Glaive to follow it up. I guess that technically counts as a multi-kill. Two versus three now. Lackey and Ilian left alive here and trying to see if they can recover it, but Dupree... That is a critical kill to take down Lackey. They finally bring him down, and it's going to be a second round for Astralis, finally. Mm. And talk about guys staying alive once again. Forrester in the last round. This time it was Dupree dropping that smoke immediately. As soon as that, e as soon as that execute was coming through, he drops the smoke and creates the space to stay alive, and, and Tropic have to deal with that. It just slows everything.
well. Still over a minute left. Taking a fair bit of damage. Green grenaded down out here. Sip. Awkward. So three versus five. And even at this scoreline, you have to really remember, Astralis are not out of this game yet. It is, uh, you have to, you, and especially if you're in Tropic, you have to really think deep about this. Because if you let them back in, if they get up to three, if you lose the economy, which they almost have, then it, they could be right back in the game in a, in a couple of minutes. So, so don't give them the opportunity. Even this round, which looks like it's probably not going to go their way, another kill would make a huge difference, even if you don't win the round. Twenty-five seconds, and they're just going to slowly run it down. Try and see if they can uh, maybe bait Astralis into anything. But <laughs> they're not even really pretending right now, Astralis. They are just happy to finally get another round. Will be a third on the board for them, so that is something to work with. Something they can be a little bit more happy about. Three to seven. Again, it is a great scoreline for Entropic, but the the half is not done yet. We've seen this before, where. You have a pretty good start, and suddenly you, you still end up at like a, a seven, you know, maybe nine, six, but 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 otherwise eight, seven type scoreline, and it doesn't feel nearly as cool as when you were up seven to one, right? Seven to one, seven to three now, and leading into the eleventh round. Yeah. Well, oh, this probably is that would help. A uh, this is a this is a critical point in the game, in my opinion. This is a point where. If, uh, if at this point uh, Entropic lose this round, Astralis probably go from three to five rounds just based on the T side economy here. So they really need to put this one together. The flashes are really good. Forrest is down to the. Oh god, they're so deep in. They can win the round right now. Three kills unreturned from Astralis. Glaive on his own, fighting for his life out here. And he's doing such a fantastic job. Three kills with the M4. He had to manage every single bullet or he was going to run out. But he comes back for more to try and throw that nade. And that got him killed. And now. It is on Magus to try and follow up on the legacy of Glaive out here because he just basically got them back in the round. Can Magus do it? They are backtracking. They have over a minute. They don't care. They're going to go back through T-spawn now. Oh, and this smoke, this smoke has sold it, Anders. Magus has got every reason to think that they're somewhere around here right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, think about the context of the game. Every other time they've shown up on long, they've gone long. They've never come, come back from this position. So Magis must also be thinking, well, they never actually turn it around. But now they do. They're going to have the bomb plant. He is going to be so far away. It could be done, but there is no surefire way to win this round. If you're Magis, I almost feel like just pull out your knife, run there, and try and headshot the first guy you meet real quick. Because if you spend too much time thinking and waiting... It's probably not going to work out well. Ilian will take him down. It is an eighth round for Entropic. They avoid that economic death, and they are so much on top of this game right now. Astralis can still buy. That is the only silver lining here. What's crazy is that this is just that is almost a round that Glaive brings back single-handedly, and he is the only one in double digits on the side of Astralis right now with 12 kills, zero assists. The guy just feels like he has to pull his team across the line right now. And while that's what leaders do, that's what the in-game leader needs to do sometimes. He needs to get the guys fired up and fighting. And so if Glaive is going to have to be the one, I mean, hopefully that's going to be enough to get Dupree and Magus in this game. We can start seeing them having an impact here. Because that's an eighth round on the board for Entropic. And now Entropic have a chance to break Astralis' economy as well, which would throw three things completely out of whack for Astralis in this first half. Yeah, they are skirting right on the edge here, Astralis. There's, there's no doubt about it. That w I mean, that triple from Glaive is unbelievable because... <laughs> yeah, one after another, just... And he's at the edge of the smoke. If they just tag him through or anything, he's probably going to be sprayed down and, and die. He's got the M4A1, which again, it's a powerful rifle. But it does have that bullet penalty. So if he, he can't just randomly and indiscriminately spray through the smoke, he actually has to be really conservative with using those bullets. And he did do a fantastic job. But it, 
I don't know. It was, it was all for nothing at the end of it. It's that classic entropic where it's just like, just keep throwing bodies at him. He's right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. him. And then it's just one after another running through that smoke, giving the sh giving the shot to Glaive, doing exactly what he needs them to do. And but maybe here we get the smokes going down in mid. That could set up for the B split, but Entropic, are, they're looking for an A play. And a run boost on top of it. What a wild play. Run boosted with an AK and a major and a headshot on Sip. Absolutely beautiful. Lackey is such a powerful player in this game. Another headshot to bring down Glaive. Another double kill. It is every single time they hit this A bomb site. He is ready to fight them. Absolutely stellar. He's going to get one more. A triple on Lackey. No one can stop him. And now it's on Crad to try and take a little bit of a fight to Sip here, but. Megas and Lucky are just going to have to back on out and surrender this round. That makes it nine for Entropic. This guy, Lucky, is absolutely out of control. Uh, Megas uh, just uh, scrapes him off the bottom of his shoe like some crud. That he just <laughs> found, I don't know. Get out. <laughs> that is such a brutal take. That run boost, by the way, is... That's something we typically see when people have pistols and they just want to get a bomb planted. Like, let's mm -hmm. just throw someone with a Glock. It's going to be funny. Yeah, even take if the it bait. Doesn't work. Go duck hunting. Exactly. But they did it in an actual round. Yeah. Maybe it's going to hold on to the M4. Again, that is super important to Astralis. And the AWP on Lucky as well. So Astralis actually have some firepower to play with here. Glaive has got enough to full buy. Dupree as well. It's actually going to be a fairly uh, decent buy coming up here for Astralis. So it's not quite the disaster. But Entropic have got nine rounds on the T side of Dust2 right now. They are cooking with gas, Anders. They are looking so good. And Lackey, again, with these individual plays that are making so much of a difference. Because it's not like everybody's firing on all cylinders on Entropic either. I mean, Nickelback kind of lagging behind right now, trying to set his teammates up, but uh, not, right, not really getting the kills. Um, it really feels like some individual plays that are making the difference for both of these teams yeah. in, uh, in this first half. Lackey for Entropic's really standing out, and Glaive on the side of Astralis. So... We're just gonna run. They're just gonna see uh, what these guys are capable of. What they're proving a little bit too on the on the side of Entropic is the fact that that A bomb side is just a it's a sore leg, right? They've uh -huh. been kicking and kicking at that leg all the way through. It's it's starting to get really painful, and it doesn't matter if they go long or catwalk. They're still making it work. So that whole A side defense is probably not feeling that great right now. It's frustrating when you you kind of know it's coming round after round and you can't stop it. That is a very cool smoke that Astralis just threw through the mid doors to make it look like somebody was going to push lower dark. That forced some utility out of Entropic that they probably would not have wanted to use. True. But they had to commit a flash down to lower dark to actually clear this because this smoke that just cleared, that is a big warning signal for Entropic. They have to worry that Astralis are playing aggressive this round. And they've been slowed down coming out long as well. They haven't really gone for it. They tried once in Tropic, remember, to, to go for B instead, where Magus was hiding in the corner and they ended up losing. Yep. So I think that was one of the attempts from Entropic to try and sort of change the, the otherwise very A-centric first half that we've been seeing here. They could do it again, right? If you catch them off guard, it's not we can tell Astralis on the minimum are not actually leaning that heavily A right now. Pretty standard setup, but uh, if you catch them in the right round, maybe you could. I wonder if they go for the same setup now. Smoke CT, smoke B slope and just power up uh, Catwalk, or are they going to try and slow play it? They have so many grenades to use. It's kind of shocking to see them try and run it dry. They're going to set up the initial smokes. They've actually smoked down on ramp as well. They've got a huge wall to run behind. And let's see, Lucky, last time they didn't flash him out quite enough. Maybe they could do it here, creeping through, and Lucky's going to be going down this time. That's no double kill for him. The flash goes off a split second after that shot. That is crazy timing. But Entropic have still managed to crab walk their way up onto the bomb site. They will get a bomb plant here, and now the onus is on Astralis to retake. Yes, it is. Not that many actually well, no nades really left on the side of Entropic. So holding catwalk could be pretty tricky, although Nickelback with a good kill. Crad coming in from long, not even waiting for the timing. And takes a kill out long, dropping Glaive as well. He's controlling it. Oh, and the spray at range to bring down Megisk Dupree all on his own. Just like that from a four on four into a one versus three. It was looking so good otherwise for Astralis, but it'll be a 10th round on the board for Entropic. Ilian taking the last kill. They are they're playing a phenomenal game right now. Then, Crad. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say, in spite of losing that early fight to Lucky. Well, I was just going to say, Crad the Chad. He That's played that truly. perfectly at long. The off timing as well, always making him think like, okay, now you have a chance to peek A site. Nope. Because he goes, re peeks again as Magus is thinking, okay, he's not going to peek. He's going to play passive at long. No. Crad pulling a fast one on him, catches him looking the wrong way. That is impeccable stuff. And here's the aggression from Astralis now into mid, but they were watching it in Tropic. They are aware that this is coming. Yep. 
It's a play that we see more now after the change to Dust 2. People try and do it. I don't think it has the same surprise factor that it used to, but saying that, they're kind of looking for it, but Krad is still running. He's not aware at all that they're... Oh! Oh, he's still alive! Oh, no, that is a disaster. Krad now going to be slowly walking back and actually spotting for Sip and taking him down. This has really backfired on Astralis, and now the question is, could they even help out Dupree? Let's see. He's going to get at least that kill in return, but they're out long at the same time. They've given up on this part, and they're going to go fight Lucky instead. And they realize now that they're, I mean, if with an extra player up top like that, Lucky gives it away. Going to lose that fight through the smoke with the FAMAS. Bold, trying to make a play, but that's just not going to happen. And now Entropic, Entropic can get the bomb planted. There isn't much that Astralis can do to stop this. A little bit of a jump. I was going to say, otherwise they could have tried to boost. The jump is doing a bit of damage. They don't need a bit. They need to win this round badly on the side of Astralis. 10 to 3. Glaive still hanging around with the UMP. 14th round, so I mean, you could you could justify saving maybe if you're on the Astralis side, you kind of know that you're going to need this money in the next round, although they are going for it now. They're going to find Ilian as well, leaving Lackey on his own, and the jump coming in. Glee with a shot on Lackey at the end with the UMP, so still pretty impressive stuff here and a pretty good retake coming through from the side of Astralis. I thought they were going to run out of time, and it I was thought pretty so close. I thought so, too. You were right to point out the lack of utility there to help the, with that retake either as well. That's so tough on Astralis, but they managed to fight their way through. And Tropic, when you get stuck on that defensive back foot and the momentum is shifting against you, it's Astralis who are just pushing aggressively. It can be really tough to hold, and I think that's what happened with Entropic there, just trying to hold off the flood wasn't going to be happening. They have a, ter they have a pretty good long spawn now, though, so they could once again just go crashing out long. What is the money like? Little... Indeed. Big changes as well made, and we saw Astralis finally take advantage of it. Throw some chaos into these rounds. Try and avoid being too predictable here. You know, it's better late than never. Every round matters in a game of Counter-Strike, and so if Astralis can manage to pick up the remaining two rounds in this half, that's going to be big. Uh, this is going to be the last round of this first half, and so they won the last one with some aggression up mid, trying to get that chaos going, trying to make it a little bit more difficult for Entropic to predict what was coming. But uh, we need to see something more here from Astralis on this final round. At least they get the full buy. They'll have everything they need going into this round. So no excuses on the firepower side. It's kind of impressive because Lackey's been having a great game at 16 kills. But Glaive's actually at 15. He's one behind. And I mean, that's... That's kind of that's kind of hard to match. I would say that kind of an output yeah, in, in one half. I know Glaive. You know he's been touted as a fragging in game leader in the past, but it's not his job. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I put a lot of emphasis on the on the beginning on that at the beginning of this match. Thorin as well on the desk has put a lot of emphasis on this. You know that we need to look it's to Dupree and luxury, Magus, but to to smash. And um, if Glaive is the one top fragging, that is a losing situation for Astralis. I think you really need to have Dupree and Magus at the front doing a lot of the heavy lifting here for the team. But of course. It is always tough, and it is worth considering that this is still CT side, and those are the two B anchors. So if they're so they're if they're always going into retakes on A, yeah. that's a hard life as a CT side. So I will cut them a little bit of slack there. If they're not getting hits on B, then they're not going to get too many chances to kill. So maybe T side, you know, they're going to lead and just smash everything in front of them. And really, that's what Astralis are hoping is going to happen because so far, Entropic have done a good job of dodging Dupree and Magus and not really letting them get in. Yeah, that is actually it's interesting, and it's. It's a story we've seen before. We've been here where you're just not doing anything on that B bomb side. It happens on multiple maps. This still was very, very A heavy for uh, for Entropic in the first half, so it's kind of impressive. But then again, like we pointed out, once it's working, once they found found out, we can actually just go long. And even if they know we're coming, even if they have time to set up a defense, yeah. we're still winning. Um, so so maybe maybe it's not such a bad idea. Just keep hitting that soft spot until. I mean, Astralis, to their credit, I don't think there weren't many rounds where they heavily over-rotated, and even some of the ones where they did, actually, where they were, like, three long, 
they still didn't win that fight. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, but otherwise, that's an easy mistake to make if you're on the CT side. Is you suddenly say, all right, l listen, we're just gonna have to put one B, four A, and forget about the middle because we're just getting beat up. Well, again, you saw in Tropic throughout that one round where they did go B instead, and if that if that coincides where that's where you you've leaned A. There's nothing worse as an in-game leader. If you're on the defense and you, you've asked all your troops to come help you out on that A bomb site and, and they don't even show up, that just feels like losing. I mean, you, you know, you wouldn't even be in that round if it weren't for Glaive. True. Right? You know, if he doesn't pull a triple out of nowhere, like a rabbit out of a hat, I mean, Astralis are just, it would be a completely just horrible scoreline that we've got going on right now because in Tropics, money would have been stronger and then who knows what happens in the following rounds, right? But, I mean, it's still a pretty disastrous first half here for Astralis. If they end this on four rounds, it's going to be so difficult for them to fight back in the second half. Granted, they'll be on the T side, so they'll get to set the pace. They'll get to make it happen. But, um, you know, Entropic will have a huge lead. So just a reminder, everybody, in case you're wondering, this is, in fact, LAN. Uh, not quite to the, to the, to the standard of uh, what we... Um, well, let's say we're not in front of a crowd yet. We're not in the arena, but these guys are on location in Stockholm playing in the hotel. So they are on land together in that sense. But uh, obviously they're fighting to play in front of the audience. And uh, <laughs> the arena is going to be sick in Stockholm. Oh, it, it definitely will be. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're building our way into it. Ten oh, to four is the first so off here. good. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. It really has, you know, in a in a in a in a weird way, it's felt like life has just been on standby for yes. a really long time. Um, I sometimes catch myself thinking, like, why does it feel like everything? It's obviously, obviously, this whole COVID situation has made everything feel different. But even when it's not that, I I just I've noticed it in my life. It's not quite the same. I've really missed this. So um, <laughs> you know, I'm glad glad that we could be back doing this once again at a at this kind of a level. They're all moving around, so I don't know if that means they're uh, they're about good to go. Hopefully soon. Um, money in terms of that for Entropic certainly looking like they could they could put something together here. They're not going to be defenseless in this upcoming round, so so that's good to see. Oh, we are lacking one of the players yes. in Entropic, so again, four and five. So don't want to play like that. One of them dropped, so that's what we're waiting on to, uh, to get them back. back in. And well, that's why it's like okay, considering you're all in that. I mean, we do have admins on staff over there in Stockholm, so obviously they can stay on top of it and. I uh, hope to uh, be able to help to fix the problems quickly. But uh, the fact that uh, that is one of the things, actually, hmm, I wonder, it's like a logistics thing, because if the teams are playing from rooms, individual rooms, it means the admin has to hustle over to whichever room the team is in if it's a, if it's a PC issue or something like that. you know. <laughs> so maybe yeah. they have to, what, he's just sitting there waiting for the hotel, the elevator? you know. <laughs> so hopefully not. Hopefully they're all at the same floor or something. Poor guy. Or they have hired more than one. It's possible, right? That's, that's also it's possible. Just a whole team of you know, people, sure. Just don't take the elevator. Go up the stairs. Get that exercise. Yeah, use it as an opportunity. It's good. So <laughs> Get the hustle. Unless it's <laughs> like a 10-floor difference in that case. Maybe not. Um, I've got to say, again, we, we sort of outlined it in the beginning, the, the pressure difference of being the heavy favorites in Astralis versus being yeah. just the, the, the young up-and-comers of, of Entropic, even if some of them have some experience, obviously. Uh, it's still, it is still pretty it's pretty impressive when you get to see it like this, right? They just, they're just cruising through some of these rounds here, and, and Astralis really, really look like they're under a, a fair bit of pressure early on. So um, that's so interesting. This is the dangerous situation that Astralis find themselves in, and it's the one that all Tier 2 teams find themselves in, which is you're in the online melee now, essentially. So <laughs> you're in that Tier 2 melee where it's chaotic, anything goes. You have insane fraggers who can just take rounds out of nowhere and just take over maps the way Lackey has taken over this first half. I mean, this is something that's very possible, but that Astralis, you know, for a long period of time, they didn't really have to deal with. Yeah. Now, now, now these teams have been kind of playing in online, and so you have they they've been rubbing shoulders with these uh, these online teams that they wouldn't have before when it was only land that they were competing on. But Astralis are a team that are used to wi you know being in the top eight and being like, okay, we're gonna wait for the for the other eight teams to join us who are more experienced and who play our kind of style of CS, and so we don't even need to worry about that that other kind of CS that Entropic might be playing, right? Astralis right now are running head first into uh, into Entropic and into a style where perhaps they're still trying to make adjustments. It's also a world in which at previous majors, right, like Astralis are already at the legend stage. Yeah, yeah, right? they're just so like, they're chilling. They're with the other eight, just waiting, and waiting in the wings. When you get there, very likely, you're going to be playing with a bunch of, against a bunch of people, sorry, that you know their style, right? You know yeah. what it's like playing against Simple and Cyber. And even exactly. though they might be really good players, at least at least it's a pattern that's kind of familiar to you. You have an idea about how they're reacting to certain situations. It might not be the case with Entropy. Astralis probably, they probably Obviously, they've watched demos. Obviously, they've tried to prepare. It's not like they're just going to walk in here blind today. Uh, but still, it's 
it's tricky, right, to try and remember. They they couldn't know necessarily that they would have f they end up fighting in Tropic in this game, right? That's not something they can necessarily prepare for. So even if you watched a couple of their games, you have to now try and remember how exactly does Lackey play that long position? Mm -hmm. How is he normally doing it? Is he going to be aggressive? Does he just go for it? Like, you don't know that in your bones the way that you would against some of the teams that Astralis maybe more regularly would have played a couple of years ago. It would have been different, right? So there's, there's, some, there's some stuff here that's really working against them. Um, yeah, Astralis are just... I think that they, they really lost the first round draw, taking Copenhagen Flames first round. I think that was the worst case scenario for Astralis. Could have very well Out been, of yeah. all the first round picks, they get Copenhagen Flames. I think that was the worst one for them. And now they're up against Entropic, who, or, you know, they come from the CIS region. That's no joke. Those guys grind and those guys hit hard. And, uh, you know, second round, you're, you've, already, you've, already gotten, you've already taken one shot today. Maybe you're a little dazed. You haven't quite got your feet under you. And now you're just getting pummeled by Lackey and the rest of Entropic. I mean, the yeah. beatdown right now that Astralis are taking. Now, obviously, they wouldn't have just go straight out, right? Like they'd have ch have a chance to play a, a best of three to uh, to try and True. try and keep going, True. which I think is format-wise, is a really good pick. That's a nice way to do it because then yeah. you can't really complain, right? You've so, well, you know, you got all the chances to try and get this done. I think best of ones also are way more forgiving now than they than they were before. When everybody was really complaining cool. about best of ones before, that was at a time when the economy was way less forgiving and the maps were way more one-sided. So you can have just blowout halves where it's just like you you lose two rounds and your whole half is over essentially, and a best of one could be really cutthroat. That's actually a good point. Today, yeah. now with all the safety nets the vet, the devs have put in, the maps are way more even, way more equal. The economy is way more forgiving, and so I I just want to hear less whining about best of one because I don't think it's nearly as cutthroat as it was once upon a time. And then you get your safety net with the best of three. You know, yeah. like you said, you still get your best of three, but I think that having the, the two rounds of best of one, I'm fine with. That's That works. I still happily would tag on another, like, four or five days or whatever it would be to to add, like, a double elimination type of mm -hmm. thing because that just would be cool. Um, I think just for the story, I don't want every tournament necessarily to be double elim, but I think for uh, for the major, why not? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's fun. Um... It would be nice. It would be nice. But we still get 12 days of Elite CS, and four of those days are going to be right now. That feels like so much. Oh, that's amazing. It's going to be so good. But uh, it looks like we've got all five back for Entropic. So, all right. Are we ready to go? Sh shoot that starting pistol and and let's get the show back on the road. It's the 15th round. A little bit of a. I mean, it's hard to know whether or not sometimes sort of an inadvertent technical timeout like this one could could be more beneficial for one team or another. I feel like maybe for Charlotte, if it wasn't this long, it it maybe would have been. But now they're actually <laughs> just getting to stew in it, right? In Entropic, yeah. I mean, they they weren't just rushing down anyway. They were playing, they were playing pretty measured. I would say they weren't just rushing long and rushing the A bomb site. They they took time to think. So I don't think they're going to be losing a lot of momentum in in having a little bit of a break here. But Astralis are going to, uh, you know, have time to sort of think, man, we're <laughs> really not winning this game right now, at least. Uh, and that can be uh, that can be a little bit tough to to sort of sit in, right? If, it, if, if this is if this is like nine to six right now, or, or I guess eight to six or something, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of more, a little bit more even. But I feel like Astralis must be probably a little bit more stressed at the moment. Hopefully, again, this is where you want the experience coming through. This is where you want them to be not stressed at all, although... I think oh. that's hard. that's easier said than done. In two maps, this they they they've only won ten rounds. Their first match of the day against Copenhagen Flames on overpass, they lost sixteen <laughs> six. So Copenhagen Flames already blew them up once. Now you have Entropic, who are ten four, could finish this eleven four if Astralis can't come up with some magic in this last round. Imagine a world where Astralis are just getting utterly demolished in two maps. Just this this is uh, that would be a devastating start to the tournament. I mean, you can still look yeah. forward to the best of threes. You can still have that scenario where Astralis, you know, it's not going to just be one more best of one that's uh, separating them from the void. But uh, <laughs> it's still a world in which uh, the defending champs could get knocked out. <laughs> that would be... I don't, I'm, I'm guessing someone has that in their pickums. Um, not yeah. me. Uh, that would be a crazy pick. That would be pretty sick. S someone's got to, right? There's got to there's be someone out there who's seen it coming, so... Um. Shout out to those people, I suppose. Very hard. I I feel like this is something that's happened every single major for me. When I look at the bracket and the opening games, uh -huh. I just think it's so obvious who's going to win. Like, I'm not even in doubt. I'm like, of course I know who's going to win these opening games. Like, no problem. Okay. And if it, every single time I'm like, damn, this is like I'm way off. <laughs> there's, always, <laughs> there's always something crazy happening at the major. I don't know why it is, but it's just that I, I should just start counterpicking or just like, every other game I just random it because it feels like I just... I'm always wrong on, on like half of these picks for 
especially in the beginning i feel like it's so it's so rough so um and we how are your predictions going i don't ca i can't remember so far i'm good i've got everyone except <coughs> for the astralis upset and i'm kicking myself on I that one i think i've got everyone except for the astralis i, th I want to say that's true but yeah. maybe i'm just making that up now yeah. that I, we can't check it but, <laughs> but i feel like <laughs> <I'm pretty laughs> right. maybe i submitted crazy picks you know check the desk later guys when we see the predictions you'll see what anders picked yeah just madness <laughs> um so, i mean this is uh but we're still waiting. We don't know, guys, what's going on. So in case you're wondering, we're wondering, too. We're in the dark with you guys. Um, oh, microphone problems, apparently. Okay. Seems like a Someone's mic problem. Died. So That is important, though. How does that happen? Someone, um, I don't know. Also, I mean, if you have oh, a coach it's counting down. It's counting down. Oh, hey, we're good, Anders. Let's go. We just had to complain a little bit more, and it, it sorted oh. itself out. Guys, worth mentioning as well, no breaks in halftime. We're yes. rolling straight into the second halftime, so there's no ad break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get right into the second half. You won't want to miss it. Ilian takes a shot. He's back for more. He's got the angle. That easily could have been a kill there. Magus kind of um, ADADing a little bit there while spraying the gun, and it works out. He's going to get the kill on Forrester. Not bad. Crad not quite brave enough to move forward in that position. Lackey goes down to Lucky. And it's a three on five. Great start for Astralis. This is what they needed like five rounds ago. They yeah. needed this kind of a beginning. And I don't know why they're hanging around in the middle still. They got the three on five they need. And Magus goes down. Astralis deciding uh, to play the meta in the last two rounds of the half, which is, you know, charge mid and put pressure mid, make it chaotic. You can get out quick now onto the CT side and it can get out of hand. And so now, well, we do have Elian still hanging around in top mid. Bomb is still in control as well. Nickelback going to be holding on to that. And this, you can see just how much time this is burnt off the clock. And Tropic are only down to a minute, and they haven't really taken any control anywhere. It's going to be hard to, to get out here. Throwing that flashbang will alert Glaive on the other side. Not that he's got any backup, really. And actually, they're going to be falling back. Surely that's just being heard. I feel like... This play is being telegraphed from all the way across the map, and Astralis surely know what is going to be coming, and especially they'll know Dupree just has a Molotov in his hand. Going to be ready for it, that'll segment them off, and he gets the headshot on Krat as well. So this round is definitely done, and Astralis will be able to find a way to get five on the board here. Ilian on his own, and Dupree's already pushed up. That's a pretty good little double kill for him, and it will be 10 to 5 overall at the end of the half in favor of Entropic, which again is really impressive. And like you said, we're not going to be having much of a break here. We're just going to go straight into the second half, which I kind of like. Let's yes. keep the pace up and uh, and just keep going. Exactly. And now I really want to keep an eye here on Astralis. Now that they decided to play aggressively uh, in the last two rounds of the half, they started to play a bit more towards the meta of what we expect to see on Dust2 for the CT side. A bit more of aggression in mid, pushing up for dark, really taking the fight to Entropic. That's really cool. And now we get to see Astralis on the T side where they get to call the strats. Obviously, Dust2 is still one of those maps where we kind of look at spawn and where you spawn on the T side. If you get a good long spawn or a good upper dark spawn, you know, it can determine what you, what kind of strat you want to run. So keep an eye on where the players are spawning in that in that rectangle. But I mean, now we get to see if Dupree and Magus are just going to be here to rip heads off. This is going to be sick. They need it badly. Astralis second half, it has to be really good from the start. They're not going to get, well, they're going to be 2-2 oh, oh in the group, and that's not what you want. Leanne. Crad playing here behind the smoke. They're not checking it. They're not suspicious. Oh, he walks out. It could be beautiful, and it will be. Crad with a triple. Taking down Lucky Megas can sip. They just were not suspicious. They did not suspect that anything bad was happening inside of that smoke. And oh boy, were they wrong. Glaive now. One versus five out here. And the setup, the fact that Nickelback got that one kill, that is suddenly all of their attention. Their mind is just somewhere else. And Glaive, well, he's being held. The dualies and a USP on one side. He's going to be straight dead out here. Execution 11 to 5 in favor of Entropic. Outrageous, Anders. Outrageous. And I think you get that you just hit the nail on the head. The man playing mid, just taking pot shots at Cat, is just <laughs> making Astralis think, oh, everything is normal. Nobody's here. We're going to be able to aggro up Cat real quick and get onto that A bomb site. Little did they know. Crad had pushed through the mid doors. And again, that's the thing that you can do on the CT side. You can push through those doors real quick now. And nobody was there to watch for Astralis. Now they'll have a player in suicide Astralis. So they've made that adjustment to keep an eye on things. But in that pistol round, that was not the case. And Entropic took perfect advantage of it. So now Astralis, well, just, it's, it's a disastrous start to the second half here. Losing the pistol is so painful. But they do go, they do go for the hard eco this round. So that's cool to see. It means that we'll get rifles in the next round. I mean, it, it's a, 
absurd as it sounds, I think it's the third or the fourth time that I brought up this point, but they have to keep believing that they just are the better team and that once things get rolling, they're going to be able to win no matter what the difference is, really. So I kind of, I understand why they're doing this, even if it, even if it seems like they're running out of runway for this plane to actually take off. It's, they're going to have to keep trusting in it. 12 to 5, the scoreline. And you, like you said, straight into the AKs here. Indeed, indeed, Anders, you're right. And yeah, that's the one thing where instead of going for the Deagle Kevlar, they go for the Hard Eco. So we will get that. Uh, they don't. They don't even get close to planting a bomb, but they will have enough for uh, the AKs and some nades. And a Scoot picked up on Lucky, so we will get that shot. And there it is. All right. Wallbang drops Forrester in mid. That is a good start to the round. Crad is going to be slowing them down a little bit with that Molotov. They don't want to push behind it. And they're in a similar position. They're all out long. It looks like Entropic. No. Oh wow. That is a clean headshot if I've ever seen one. Magus taken down Crad. I was going to say otherwise, kind of a, a reversal of roles here where the CT side knows what is coming for sure. They definitely know, but they might still lose the round even if they have all the intel, which normally is like half the battle in Counter-Strike. It's just figuring out where's the actual attack going to happen. Well, this round, there's no mystery, but it still could be very hard to hold the A-bomb side, just like we saw in the first half, really. Lucky though, doing a good job. Nickelback is there. Oh, Astralis, they should not be losing control of this round, but somehow they are lucky. This is just a scout. That's not going to be a kill. And just like that, it's a one versus two. I really cannot believe it. They had this round locked down. Three versus five. They had that A-bomb side. They were just there. And they somehow walk their way onto the site and get killed. Magus walking into the scout. He's real low on health, and he's going to be down. He couldn't find the head of Ilian, and that's a 13th round for Entropic. Unbelievable scenes here. I cannot believe it, Anders. I cannot believe what we just saw. Astralis getting picked off one after another, slow walking up onto that bomb site. Entropic, that's outrageous that they actually managed to pull that off. I cannot believe that they actually managed to do it. And so clean as well. You're thinking with two entries, that's it. Astralis, they're in the bin. And yet Entropic, they wasted no time. They they went <laughs> for the gamble and rotated hard over. There's Zipnix again giving them the man advantage, again taking out Forrester. Yeah, Forrester now... can't catch a break in these rounds. He's just sat two rounds now because of this spot in mid. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's also, you, you're starting to feel like, yeah, but does it make a difference? If they yeah. can't win the rounds, because that kind of an opening normally will give you a little bit more to work with. And they just threw away a round where they had this exact same setup. You're right, you're right. So, let's see, that's pretty close. But Ilian will take him down with a much more powerful rifle. So back into a four on four. And the rest of them, they have pistols. They could try and do something. They're getting outsniped by Ilian, who's had a, mm. it's a pretty respectable game himself. A little bit of a missed opportunity there, perhaps. But he's got a back, some backup in here. So even if they try and flash him down, yep, the M4 is in front. Always a good setup to try and do that. And it's a two on four. Has he not missed a shot yet? <laughs> that's sick. What a good feel. He's just tagging everybody, and that's what it feels like when you get to just stand your ground in mid, just taking shot after shot. Astralis challenging one after the other as well. And Astralis right now are looking a little disjointed. Spacing not quite right, not quite taking advantage of uh, utility either. And so I'm wondering right now what the comms are like on Astralis, if they're, if they're clean or if they're quieting down. Because this is just looking like another beating, Anders. 14 to 5 for Entropic now, who are in full control. Entropic get to go for the full buy, have everything that they need. And while after that round of Eco, Astralis are going to get a full as well. Lucky's going to finally get his hands on an AWP. It's yeah, that was the spot. It's becoming increasingly difficult to spin this into into something positive, isn't it, Samla? How do you how do you it's, how do you sell this? It's tough. I mean, so it's still the roller possible. Roller coaster is more fun on the way down. Kind yeah, of? I guess for Astralis, right? You're just they just want the best of threes. Whee! They only want best of threes. You know, they're like screw these best of ones. We'll get these best of ones done as fast as possible, and we'll just get into best of three territory, right? <laughs> You're gonna have they're gonna have to come up with something because that's where they're headed right now. Fourteen to five. They got some rifles back in the hands on Astralis here, but we're, we're talking about realistically something like 11 rounds in a row to try and get back. If they mess up at any point during that, it's probably going to be done. So certainly make for a very cool story, but the likelihood of that happening is almost zero. Set up on the catwalk. They've got one out long. That's Sip hanging out there. They've got Megaskin up a dark holding an eye on that. It's a pretty standard setup, which can kind of spiral into anything really for Astralis, right? It's so early on. Mm -hmm. Could still be a fake on Catwalk and go back to B-splitting if you want it to out middle. But um, we'll see. Sip is starting to fall a little bit further back. 
I'm gonna come join them, it seems like. I still wonder if this isn't gonna be a B-split. It feels like it because you can st you still have Magus lurking around in Upper Dark right now looking for that info push from Entropic. So if anybody were to push for info, but Entropic, they've fully committed to this hold now. With 38 seconds, they're saying two on B, three on A. We are not moving. We're not going anywhere. We yeah. just wait and see where they hit. And we have to hit our shots when the time comes. Speaking of time, 27 seconds. Lucky with the kill on four is a good flashbang, but Lackey, he could not pick up more than them. They were really blind, I think, in that middle, but they find a way to thread the needle here. Astralis even getting the shot for the smoke on Dupree there. That's not bad. Taking down Nickelback, and that'll give them the round for yep. sure, even with 12 seconds at the end. They had time to put the bomb down, and yeah, that was a that was a bit of a classic setup, really. Yep. And I mean, we saw them throw the smokes in the middle. What you didn't see is the smokes that land on the catwalk to try and sell that A side of the fake, and I mean, they did a good job, there's no doubt. Well, having the Lurk Smoke on Catwalk is what's going to keep Entropic just focused on A, or at least stuck there, because they can't rightfully rotate while that smoke is up, because that's the whole point of a Lurk Smoke. You don't know if somebody's sitting behind it who's there to wreck you. And so Entropic are stuck, but Entropic really did just commit to the idea that wherever Astralis show themselves, we're going to just hit our shots. And they set it up with that flash through the smoke and CT, but it just wasn't enough. I mean, everybody is there from Astralis because they, they are going for the death ball approach, where it's just no matter where you peek from, three rifles are going to be facing your way. So you're not going to kill all of us. We will eventually whittle you down and get onto a bomb site. And we'll think about this. That setup that they just ran is so variable that Astralis can do this you know, three or four or five more times yeah. with different outputs, right? Yeah. They could do that strategy where they drop down in the CT spawn. They could do it where they legitimately execute on the A bomb site. They can do it where they go out middle and then wait and wait for the CTs to try and retake middle and see if they do it early around. There are so many variations of the same smokes and flashbangs that just have a different outcome. So if they get catwalk over again here from, from Entropic, if they can win that fight, they can kind of keep messing with them for a long time to try and build something behind it. Lackey, though, he's pushed into lower dark with an AWP. That is a wild play. I'm pretty sure Dupree was close enough to hear the footstep. That's why Dupree's playing it this way. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there was an audio cue that told him somebody pushed lower dark. But he doesn't have anyone in the middle. They can set up that smoke on the Xbox. That's... That's that's okay, but is it actually going to make a difference? Nice Molotov to force back Ilian as well. And now Lackey's going to be feeling really, really lonesome. And Dupree, he's run out of patience, maybe a bit too soon. A missed opportunity. Lackey, but he's still not falling back. He is so brave. He's just not giving up on it. Flashed as well, but so is Dupree on the other side. They're going to try and go for him, and they'll finally win that fight. That looked like it could have gone either way. Mad lad, Lackey. Mad lad. And now Dupree is just chilling out here at mid. He's going to cut this map in half and give Astralis all of the options with 50 seconds on the clock. Now Astralis looking like they're going to hit that B site. Dupree is already in position to catch the rotate, and the rest of the team can gather up and just smash onto that B bomb site. So it is all going to be riding on Forrester and Nickelback now. Those guys, they have no option but to fight their way out of this situation. And they have no grenades, so it is just going to be the raw fight. Only holding middle is Dupree. The rest of them will be coming in. A little bit one at a time, a little bit slowed down, in fact. They don't have time for this at all. Ilian and Nickelback doing it. 19 seconds, a big triple coming out from Nickelback. The double so far, actually. One of them there, I think, stolen by Forrester. And, and Lucky, he can't do anything. This was such a weak attempt from Astralis in a lot of ways. They they had the setup for it. They had the four versus two, basically, in the bomb site, And they just couldn't actually get through even the first player. They had the grenades too, Anders. Yeah, you're right. They had everything. Oh, oh. <gasps> He's he survives. Oh, <laughs> saved by the bell. That is, that's very uncharacteristic. They had set this entire round. And remember, there wasn't enough, this wasn't, this couldn't turn into a fake. There was not enough time to do anything but this. They had one guy holding middle, the other four, they need to just, they need to hammer their way through to that B bomb site. It's fine to get some spacing, right? We talk about that a lot. It's fine to have one guy go in and then a little bit of a delay, but that's not what we were seeing here. This just seemed like it was a very, very yeah. weak attempt to get into the bomb site. That makes it 15 and 6 in Tropic, one round away from putting Astralis down in the O2 bracket, and <laughs> that is, that is wild. It's out there. I mean, right now, Astralis, it, it just felt like the spacing was completely off. Glaive was just ahead of everybody else, and that just allowed for Entropic to get the feel for what Astralis were throwing at them. Now I'm seeing Glaive doing a lot of talking. Now we're going to see some buying from him, so that's good. Uh, Lucky, yep, we'll get that smoke grenade. He had enough money for it, and the nade count is pretty good here for Astralis, all things considered. But Entropic, do they go? They were thinking about it, and sure enough, but there's the trade! Elian takes Glaive!
That had to happen. <laughs> you had to have the one for one in mid. Yep. Still fighting. Think about this mid fight is something that we just did not see before the change almost ever. Crad goes down. Wow. I think probably attempting to use the confusion in middle to try and see if he could gain some more map control on there, but it definitely backfired. So four on three in favor of Astralis, which they've thrown away better opportunities than this so far in the game. So let's just see if they can negotiate this particular round. Best chance they've had so far, though, to... Well, I mean, now they can actually get around more than 16-6. So that's already good. Uh, of course, Astralis now are looking to play the perfect half to tie this up and force overtime. But uh, they, they went their first match of the major. They lost to Copenhagen Flames 16-6. True. So now Entropic down a man. Still a couple of nades to play with, though. And they have just full gambled. They're going all in on the A-side and dropping but there, hoping that Astralis is going to hit here. Look at what Astralis are doing, though. They are so sure that Entropic will make a mistake and come look for them. And that's fine to use some time on, but they used over 20 seconds to wait around like this. And that's that's starting to feel not so much like you're giving an opportunity for your opponent to make a mistake. It's starting to feel like you're just not really making any assertive calls right now. And Entropic have not given them any mistakes so far. Nickelback is right at the edge. He hears the footsteps. He's going to spray down one. And on the other side, Dupree is on his own, trying to hold on to it. Makers finally showing up to help out, but this is not a good look. 15 seconds on the clock, and they're going to have to try and see if they can get through Ilian. But that's just not easy. He's already taken one kill. Makers out in the open, and he is gone. Six.